I'm talking about anyone that's not a man, okay? So, <laughs> uh, I am so excited and we'll get into the title and how we got there in a second, but I would love to start with our panel and I for sure will not do you justice by introducing you myself. So we'll start with you, Trish. Please let everyone know who you are and your projects and why you're so incredible. Okay, great. Thank you, Frankie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a little incredible. juice. <laughs> Who's better than Frankie? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yes, well, I am Trish Doolin, and I am honored to be here. I am a writer, director, producer. A big movie that I did where we got a lot of acclaim, one of a lot of awards, was called April Shower. And that was just so much fun. And that was an interesting story, you know, being a female, trying to get that going at that time. My, my publisher's here. I have a new book that I just am seeing for the first time. He brought it here. Call me yeah. five guys. And um, I already have uh, people who want to make this into a movie. So I am so excited about that. Yeah. And, um, I am also doing another movie in London coming spring. So I'm really busy. And then I have my producers here who are shooting a documentary on me because two years ago I got diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And um, it was because of the genetic you know, thing that a lot of women have. And a lot of women don't know they have it. And we are with this film trying to change I guess you could say, uh, make it a law that women are entitled to a free genetic screening when they turn 21, if they want, especially women of color, because they are not treated properly in our medical system. Mm -hmm. And um, so we are trying to get this going so that women don't have to wind up with cancer. You don't have to show up with a tumor before they give you this test. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's a lot of things you could do so that you don't ever get cancer when you know you have this. So that's what I'm up to right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, do I need a mask on or what's the rule? You can take it off. I can do it. Um, if everyone's comfortable, yeah. I'm okay, comfortable. Okay, you're comfortable? Great. <laughs> um, my name is Bria Grant. Um, uh, this is what my face looks like. Um, uh, I uh, was an actress. I'm now a filmmaker. Some people might know me as a podcaster. Um, I uh, make genre movies, and uh, my latest movie is a Blumhouse movie called Torn Hearts, starring Katie Segal. Um, yeah, yeah. And I've been doing making movies for about 10 years. <laughs> Um, I'm Hannah Cook, and I write cartoons, so <laughs> um, I've written for uh, Muppet Babies, Often Off Above and Beyond, Transformers Bot Bots, and right now I'm on a Mickey Mouse Funhouse, <laughs> forcing all your favorite people to go through my personal childhood trauma. <laughs> it's a good time. <laughs> Uh, I'm Megan Fitzmartin. I write for TV and animation, uh, cartoons as well, um, <laughs> comics and podcasts. Uh, I wrote on a show called Supernatural. Um, I also have written for uh, DC Comics. I've been writing Tim Drake for the last two years. Uh, yeah. There's a um, Damian Wayne in here, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We love to see it. Um, and yeah, and I've also worked on like Passenger List is an audio drama that I worked on and um, things like DC Superhero Girls and Justice Society World War II and those types of things. <laughs> uh, I'm Tamara Robertson. Most people know me because of my work um, as a host on Mythbusters. Uh, but I'm also an uh, Emmy-nominated producer. I focus on um, combining maker skills and STEM to get kids inspired to take their hands and literally change the world by building the world they want to see. Um, so that comes in a lot of different ways. I do superhero science at all the cons, um, as well as have an outreach comic called Seekers of Science. Um, I have a podcast called Tinkering Bells, where I amplify the voices of uh, all the makers that aren't male. Um, and I have uh, 
ton of different series on YouTube, everything from maker science, where I take artisanal crafts and work with people like Jimmy DeResta to show you how to make something, and then I teach you the science behind it, to things like Ask Auntie, where my niece asks me about sloth poop, and I teach you about it. So. <laughs> You actually came. I've never seen more impeccable time. <laughs> I, uh, I planned it like that. I had a camera. I was like, that was it. <laughs> and you came from Hall H, which is a trek in its own. Ooh, yeah. Your steps in today. Yeah, I just got them all in in these heels. Oh. oh and uh, that's like a. My calves are awesome right now. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so we're actually introducing ourselves. Hi, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm Tasha Halevi, Natasha Halevi. Um, I'm so excited to be here with these incredible women. Um, I'm so inspired by women in film right now. I, I just came from Hall H where there were a lot of announcements being made and there are so many women doing such amazing Woo! things right now. There are such powerful characters on stage and such powerful women behind the, the scenes. I was sitting with um, a lot of the, the Marvel reps, and the, the, the Marvel people who are making things, and there's so many awesome women who are a part of that. Mm -hmm. And um, it's so inspiring. And um, likewise, you know, talking to them about this panel and showing them a little bit about everyone who's here, they were so inspired by everyone on this panel mm -hmm. and what they're doing and you know some some folks who I know pretty well Bria um, <laughs> talking about some of her work and what she's been doing and and um, you know the inspiration goes back and forth mm -hmm. um, and I that wasn't really a very good in introduction to myself but I'm just inspired <laughs> by her. thank you guys for for being here right. thank you um, so, for those of you who've never been on my page, you're in for a treat. I love to discuss things, um, and mostly, mostly controversial things, polarizing things, and we're going to start with our title, um, Female fe Filmmaking, Women Behind the Lens, and the need to put female before filmmakers, um, and what that means to you, because we could very well just call this filmmaking, women behind the lens, and then the panel would not have been accepted. <laughs> so, um, talk to me about how it is to navigate um, as a woman behind the lens, and how important you think it is to advocate for yourself and just to be yourself when in these spaces. Well, um, I remember, I would say probably about 20 years ago, I, I wrote this fantastic script and I knew some people in the studio, and they looked at it, and they called me, and they said, this is so cutting edge, this is so ahead of its time. If only you were a man. This <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, I mean, I literally, it made me want to start changing my name when I handed in scripts. And then I had a big meeting, and I'm not gonna name the studio, but, it was a female-driven movie with the f f females like the, this lead athlete and, and then it was a minority um, young boy in it. And they said, we love your script. Can you make the lead a male and change this to a white boy? Mm -hmm. And I was just like, no. <laughs> and, I, and I turned down like a major like studio. I said, I, I'm not... I'm not interested, that's not my movie. I'm trying to make, I, I feel like my purpose, like I feel like what I'm supposed to be doing is changing the face of filmmaking for women. So that's why I, I keep creating projects that are you know, female driven. I have a production company called Her I Can, it's, it's Her I Can, pronounced Hurricane. <laughs> but it's her I can, and our mission is to have 50%, at least 50% women behind, you know, hire 50% women to film the movie with us. So that's very cool. I, um, Tris, I need you to help me create trivia names for women to bars <laughs> because that's incredible. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, Brian, you can go. Oh, um, <laughs> now we're doing like a line thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we can go out of it. I just made Someone eye else contact can go with you. Something <laughs> to say. Um, uh, I think that there is, um, 
It's been industry, inter, interesting being in the industry. I made my first film in 2012. It went to Slam Dance in 2013. Um, and then I didn't make another movie until 2019. Uh, and I think that happens to a lot of female filmmakers. I think we're, we are set up to fail in a lot of ways, and I think we're, there's a lot more expected of us, and um, I think the bar is just a lot higher for us. But within that time period, I think the industry got to look at itself in the mirror and was like, there's a lot of men here. And so I think there was suddenly a call for, for more female voices behind the lens because we wanted to tell authentic stories from, the female, from a female perspective and, um, and, and generally different kinds of voices behind the lens, not just talking about women. Um, and I think that because of that, I think it was great, but I think that there is sort of um, a, a miscalculation where now people, I've had many male filmmakers who are friends, and I'm friends with, and, and they're lovely. Uh, I don't know why I need to say they're lovely. They're fine. They're my friends. They're my friends. They're fine. Um, uh, um, <laughs> I have friends that are men. Um, uh, 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 I've had them say to me, well, it's very easy to be a female filmmaker right now because everybody wants you. And I'm like, it's not any easier. I think like there are people actively looking, and I think there are moments, uh, there are people who are like, you know, it would be nice to have this movie that's all about the female experience directed by a woman, like wouldn't that be lovely? But a lot of times there aren't women who are available or um, uh, at the level that they need um, because a lot of us just haven't been doing it long enough. I mean, I, you're obviously a, a trailblazer, but there's very few women, I think, over the age of, I'm 40, I think over the age of 40 that have made a lot of feature films, like as, as directors, and I'm speaking mostly as a director. Um, I forgot your question. <laughs> You're actually answering it. We're talking about how yeah. important it is yeah. for women in this space. Yeah, and I think that what's interesting right now is that there's so there is a call for it, and it's it's not enough. I mean, I think people think that we're because we're saying it, we're paying a lot of lip service that there are uh, that there there's some sort of like equity behind the camera, or there's more women directing than there used to be, or more women writing than there used to be, and it's still not even close to parity. No, not at all. Um, uh, and uh, I think, yeah, are we getting into rooms and maybe getting to pitch? Sure, but I don't think necessarily we're getting a lot of jobs that are going to people who've been doing, to a lot of men who have been doing it longer in some cases because there's just been more opportunities for them along the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you yeah. think that the reason why there are so few women in this space um, at that level is because there's a lot of gatekeeping within Hollywood and that there may be women who very well can fill those spaces, but like, they don't know anyone in Hollywood. Yeah, I think it's also this really funny thing that happens where, as a, as a woman writer, to get the job, you have to have a lot of experience, you have to have a lot of references. I know lots of um, <coughs> men who <laughs> have had never written a script, yep. never written animation, and they just got one. Yeah. And it's like, but, Wait a second. Yeah. I was told I have to pay my dues. You just have to say, I would like to write a cartoon, please, and they'll give it to you. Yeah. It's very weird. And then it'll be like, explosion, gun, boom, boom, boom. Which is especially like, weird. Innovative. Which is especially weird in the preschool space that I work in, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I, I've seen Funhouse. It's a little yeah. risky. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But it is a funny thing because um, I'm sure it's similar in live action, but especially for animation, women get very pigeonholed into, you can only do cute, fun things, you can only do preschool. It's really hard for women to um, get into writer's rooms for the six to 11 or the adult animation space or even just action adventure. Um, I was on a show a long time ago when I was still a script coordinator. And of course, in the friend group in the show, there was one girl. Uh -huh. Um, they loved saying she was, oh, she's such a strong female character. <laughs> oh, yeah. Such a strong oh. character. And I was like, uh, she has flaws. She's physically strong, yes, mentally strong, yes, but it's not because she's a girl. She just <laughs> is. And uh, a really fun thing happened where most scripts we got in, all of her lines were, I don't think that's a good idea. I told you so. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> And I finally had to talk to my story editor and say, you're teaching these little boys that if they're friends with girls, the, the girls are gonna kill their fun. <laughs> um, and he didn't know, it's fine. You're, you're allowed, if you didn't know before, that's fine. But if after someone tells you you're still denying that it's a thing, then it's a problem. So as soon as I informed him, 
she literally had me come through the scripts and like demomify her lines, mm. um, which was fine, but it was like, uh, this no, is strange that I have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> Yeah, it's a very weird place to be in. Mm -hmm. um, we, we all experience this as a very diverse group, but you know, as women, um, women of color, right? You're, you don't want to spend your whole job educating, right? Well, <laughs> you just want to work. And justifying why you, you know, feel the way you do or you, you have certain experiences. Exactly. Well, and to that point, I feel like there's also a lot of uh, emotional labor that goes into those spaces that you, I've worked on a, a very, I've, I've worked in very many masculine spaces, and the number of times the emotional labor falls on me mm -hmm. is much higher than I have noticed in my male colleagues. <laughs> um, and like to the point where it's very good, I, I, it's been good for me because I have learned my favorite word, which is boundaries. But, <laughs> but it's, it is such an interesting, like, that is part of the due process that we feel that, like, that we, we feel we have to pay, or at least I did, where I was like, Oh well, I have to make everybody feel at home. I have to make sure that everyone feels not threatened by me um, in order to get to the next step or the next phase. Um, and so, but having somebody in those those rooms who were advocating for me um, was always really helpful. And like there on uh, Supernatural, there was uh, another writer, Meredith Glenn, who was a lifesaver to me during my time there. And like. We, we helped each other, and anytime we were a little frustrated, we would go into the, uh, I would go into her office and just be like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, I think that's interesting that you feel like you have to, which I feel that way too, right? You have to make everyone comfortable in your space if they don't look like you. How do you combat that? Like, how do you be yourself without having to think about what everyone else feels around you? I do get a weird sort of amusement in making other people uncomfortable. So. <laughs> yeah, I've gotten I've gotten to that space now too. Yeah, where like um, I now that I know it, I feel like I can just stare at someone else. I, I was I was looking at I was scrolling doom scrolling, uh, and somebody had tweeted about how uh, I'm doing a social experiment where they're uh, I I no longer get out of the way when a yes, man walks towards yes. me, and I. I've run into a man, I've collided with men like 28 times now. Yeah. <laughs> um, and sort of like, now that I know that, because a lot of the stuff is even for me, like I recognize that there's a lot of internalized misogyny even yeah. within women and the women in the industry. And so recognizing those things within myself and then sort of existing in those spaces for me, making this, this space safe for me where I, I don't have to do that. Um, you, you may come to me for emotional support, but I don't feel it that day, and I don't need to give it to you. You don't deserve that necessarily, just because I am working with you or something like that. So it's, I think for me, it was recognizing those moments so that like, yeah, then I can make people uncomfortable because I don't care, I'm doing fine. <laughs> Especially with your male friends, because unfortunately, yeah. uh, men mostly listen to other men. Yeah. So yes. I grew up telling my, my little brother all the horrors of just existing as a woman. So if he saw these behaviors, you know, um, from his friends, he would put a stop to it. Yeah. And yeah. I think, he, and he lived in a fraternity house, uh, had a bad reputation. And I said, you know, I read about a single incident. I'm driving down there. Yeah. I'm yelling at them, and I'm calling their moms. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and if you see a girl who looks a little you know, steady on her feet and she's being led upstairs. I'm like, I am making it your responsibility to go get her and put her in a car to send her home. Yeah. yeah. You know, cause it's like, there's not so much, it sucks, but there's not so much we can really do in those types of situations. Yeah. Cause we put ourselves in danger as well. Well, it's, and that was gonna be something that um, you were talking about having to make people feel comfortable, but there's also the other side of it. So one of the biggest, stage gate like barriers for women is funding mm. and so less than like one percent of projects that women are producing directing screenwriting are getting funding from angel donors from investors from venture capitalists um, because they just don't trust us to lead them and in addition to that we can't safely mm. go out for the drinks in the evenings we can't safely go to the bar we can't do the bonding that two guys can do, and there's never that risk of are they gonna make it home at the end of the night. I work in shops and maker spaces that run 24 hours. Do you think that I, as a five foot woman, am in that maker space after it gets dark? Right. Absolutely not. It was the same when I was in all of my engineering labs. 
I would not go into the lab after a certain point because if I was going to have to walk outside alone, it was no longer safe to do. And so as, as producers, as directors, as filmmakers, as actors leaving set each day, as women, we have a whole different thing that we're not only having to be apologetic when suddenly that guy makes the move we knew eventually he was gonna awkwardly do and be like, oh, I'm so sorry. I must have somehow led you on just by being a woman. Um, but I, would, I was vaguely to, polite and, and yeah. I had somehow invited That's him. I'm hard. sorry, I like hammers yeah. and you thought that meant I like your tools. No, I really <laughs> like hammers. So it's something where as women, like we have to balance because when we do start to be snarky back, it's very easy for them to very quickly be like, well, you're just being emotional, or you're just being a B word, or you're just being this. And so that allyship is so important because in a shop, you know, I would like to give the benefit of the doubt and say, okay, I'm Southern, you're trying to be polite, you're not actually trying to say that I don't know how to use a tool. Granted, if you come in my shop and you wanna use my welder, I'm gonna make sure you can use it, and I'm gonna question you because you might go blind and I don't want that liability. Right. So I just say, okay, maybe that's what's going on here. But after it continues to happen, I go and I find one of my male counterparts and I'm like, hey, can you just go talk to your friend a little bit about owning the fact that I'm an engineer, I'm a fabricator that's been building for a lot of decades beyond his age, and maybe he should back off a little. And it just comes around a little bit easier, but that doesn't mean the funding does. So it's like we're emotionally navigating, we're physically navigating, we're safety navigating, and on top of that, we also need to be able to get funded for our projects, so. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, all of that. You know, hey, my book is called Me and Five Guys. <laughs> so, no, seriously, but like, you know what I always say when I go in and meet people and they do the whole thing, you know, and I deal with like, you know, you deal with getting hit on all the time and, I'll, and then it's like, oh, she's a bitch or she's this or she's that. And I always say, hey, treat me like one of the guys. I grew up with a bunch of guys. I can handle it. And so like a lot of times, like that's, that's what I do because I say, I, I, just treat me that way, you know? I, in every way, you could treat me like that. I don't care. Um, including, you know, respecting me. Yeah. I, I was, yeah. as, <laughs> so, as, you know, and as an actress, like I was, I was acting for forever, I still act, but I, I, again, I don't like to mention any names, but I was doing uh, a huge, a huge uh, commercial campaign with a top, top actress. And she was so f effing cool. <laughs> and she, she like, you know, she picked me over, uh, you know, she was the one looking at the auditions. And so we had to be, it was for a whole car campaign. So I had to be in this car with her the whole campaign and we got to know each other. And she was talking to the DP, all, it was a whole, all the men behind the camera. And she was saying, hey, Trisha's not lit right, you know? She needs this, she needs that. I think my lighting is off. And then they would be like, Da, 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 whispering and come over and check and she was right. So I heard them all whispering behind the trailer, oh, she's a bitch, you know? And I'm like, hey, why is she a bitch? If Mel Gibson or Kevin Costner did that in Braveheart or Dances with Wolves, they would be brilliant, right? They knew their lighting was off, but it's a woman, so she's a bitch. Yeah. And so like, it's so different the way that we are looked at for being brilliant. It's not like, oh my God, do you see how talented she is? It's like, you know, Cause, because what, and I love men. I have me and five guys. <laughs> I, love, I love all of you men here. But what's interesting is like, if you could put yourself in our shoes, like forever, like going back centuries, sometimes men just can't, they're threatened and they can't just say, wow, you are brilliant, baby girl. You are, wow, look what you did. And so, you know, I've managed to, God bless, I have so many amazing men in my life, and there's three beautiful men here who I'm working with right now. But I mean, even some of the producers that I'm about to work with, and they know that Hurricane only wants to work with women for like DPs, makeup, every, you know, we're, we're like trying to fill all the key departments, and they're like, Trish, we love working with women. They deliver, we can trust them so much more. And these are men saying this to me. So I do feel a little change happening, which I mean, I, I, I'm experiencing a little bit of change and it makes me really excited, but I'm like brutal. I just keep pushing because I say, if you guys read this, if we, <laughs> you guys read this book, you'll, Did you name your book again, Trish? But, but, but you know what I say? 
I say, you think you could hurt my feelings? Read my book. <laughs> you ain't gonna hurt my feelings. After the shit that's happened to me, <laughs> give it, come on. Let me make my movie, see if you could hurt my feelings. You know, so, but, but sometimes you have, to, you have to say, I need you to treat me with the respect that I respect myself with. Because if, if you don't, and it's hard sometimes, because you know, women are more emotional. We just are born that way, thank God. But you know, and we're teaching men to be beautifully emotional. But if you don't say, hey, I will not tolerate that behavior, then they'll just push it until they you don't until you stand up for yourself, and so that's that's like my exploration right now that I'm you know learning. <laughs> so yeah, let's guess all of that. Yeah, that's hard. Guess all I that. Guess all that. Um, I, I have I feel like I, I every single thing that everybody said it's like I'm like oh I've got that story oh I've got oh, one I've okay. got one to back you up I've got like you know I've got another. It's all like it's all true, and I and I want to sit here and be like, well, let me tell you guys some stories. But one of the things that I really want to say out of every that I took away from what everybody was just talking about is like you mentioned the word allyship. Um, you know, you talked about how do we start teaching men to cry too? You can cry on set. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. You want to get emotional about it? Great. That's what we're doing. We're making emotions. That's literally what we're doing as our jobs. That's fine. Yep. Yeah. So you know, there's something about like the paradigm shift that needs to. Um, happen everywhere and you know it's so easy to go down it's not I don't want to call it a rabbit hole because it's important to talk about all the things we're talking about but it's so easy to talk about the hard things because you experience it and their stories and they're dramatic and they are because we have dramatic stories as women you behind, do the spiral yeah basically, and yeah. Um, you know you talk about educating people um, <laughs> the allyship like it's like we have to re reimagine our world where it's okay for men to cry, it's okay for women to cry, it's okay for men to be assertive, it's okay for women to be assertive and not be called a bitch. Yep. Um, you know, it, it, it has to change, and it has to change sadly through us educating, um, through everyone educating each other. When men learn, they need to go educate other men too. Um, and when we learn, because we grew up saying the way that we could get to play in the sandbox, the same way the guys were playing, is to be like, I'm like, I'm like one of the guys. I'm a tomboy. I'm a tomboy. <laughs> I'm not and like that's other girls. Bull. I'm not like other oh, girls. Because we should like be allowed to girl. be women and be able yeah. to play in the sandbox and not have to say, I'm allowed to play in the sandbox because I'm a tomboy. Mm -hmm. That's just wrong. Yeah. And we shouldn't all have to walk around feeling more proud of ourselves because I'm a rock climber and I climb with a bunch of dudes when there weren't, weren't any women, you know, like, and I do that, I fall back on that all the time. And I shouldn't have to fall back on that and you shouldn't have to fall back on, I was raised with brothers, you want to try to hurt me, go ahead, right. <laughs> can't hurt my feelings. We shouldn't have to fall back on that. We should no. just be able to say, here we are, yeah. let's all get to work, we have things to do, and I'm going to say the things that need to get done and you don't have to tell me back how it's done. I told you how it's done, go do it, you go do it, you go do it, and we can move efficiently and effectively, and it doesn't have to be a drama show, yeah. you know, behind the scenes, because that's a big, like, thing that, that women have changed, I think, behind the camera. Yeah. That is that, like, we don't want it to be like a, okay, everyone, it's time, it's time. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't clap into that. <laughs> it's time to go, like, we gotta go, everything's all dramatic, and we're all being, we gotta get to, we're like, okay, so everyone plays this, please. You know, okay, are we ready, or how are we, you know, everything is really, if you're on a set with a bunch of women working, stuff is efficient, mm -hmm. people are calm, everyone's happy, yes. it's like a whole different world. <laughs> so we need to, like, retrain, we need to, like, look at, what the experience is behind the camera and 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 have it yeah you know yeah. and have it without all the questions and just move and make movies and make tv shows and write wonderful characters and which are better i feel like now that we're opening up the lens and we're getting more diversity with people of color with women we're seeing better stories, right? We're enjoying it. And they're like, why is cinema, why are we in the golden age of television? I'm like, <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> um, so strange. Who knew? But, yeah. but like, who is doing all these different stories? Um, but I think it's interesting because the stories that you're all telling, which are pertaining to Hollywood, I feel like all the women in the audience 
can relate to it working wherever, right? I, you work, I worked at Michael Kors and the same thing happened <laughs> when I was working on the floor. Um, so I, I keep on hearing about allyship with men, which is a hard pill for men to swallow, right? Because we're asking them to give up their spot on top and to share it, right? Excuse me for popping, oh y'all. Yeah. Uh, um, how do you, I don't want to say persuade, but how do you talk to men and approach them and share your perspective and help them understand what's going on with us? Because um, I had a discussion about this before. When we discuss with men or anyone who's not in your position about what's going on, you sound like a conspiracy theorist, right? I can't go to yeah. dinner with you. Yeah, like, sure. it's dangerous. And they're like, well, what are you talking about? We all go to dinner every, every night. Um, so how do you navigate that in your well, space? You start out with a nice, easy anecdote. Ah. Um, I recently uh, told um, the writing crew of Mickey about a dermatologist who did not believe that I have a cyst in my ear. And that man gave me a mirror and said, that's your ear cartilage. See, it's on the other side too. It gives your ear shape. <laughs> And I told this story, and um, one of the men on the team was like, wow, this guy's just a lazy dude. I'm like, no, male doctors never believe their women patients. I shouldn't say never, but most of the time, yeah. don't believe their women patients, especially if they're um, women of color. And it is a totally normal thing that happens, and it's messed up. And then they go, oh my goodness. And then you go into what I like to call Schrodinger's rapist, <laughs> where um, any cisgender man you come across is at the same time not an attacker, could be a nice guy, or could be the one to, you know, kidnap you, rape you, murder you, dump your body in that order. Um, and because for whatever reason, we're responsible for keeping ourselves alive, if I don't assume anyone is a potential attacker, it will be my fault if those things happen to me. Yep. And once I, all the mm -hmm's, <laughs> and once I explain that to any man in my life, they go, oh my God. And I'm like, yeah, do you ever feel that when a woman's walking by you? No. <laughs> like, yes. So believe us, listen to us. Um, obviously not all men, but enough, every single woman you know has had too many stories about this. And I tell my little brother this, I'm like, your job is to say, I'm so sorry that happened to you, that sucks. And then you can say, what can I do to help? Yeah. And the answer will normally be, lecture all your friends because it's a problem. <laughs> I also think too. I just, I, oh, I feel, I feel like to your question, um, and I, the risk of sounding corny or whatever. I think some, it's not men's fault right now in some ways because they've been so conditioned in such mm. a chauvinist yeah. world. And so sometimes they do not even know that they are being chauvinist. Mm -hmm. And even my, some of my best friends, and I have to, and, but, but I feel like it's my job to not go along with or be polite. So I'll say, hey, you know I love you so much, but can I show you why what you just said is chauvinist or racist mm -hmm. or discriminating to get, whatever, because sometimes I just think it's pure like ignorance about the way that they were yep. raised. Mm -hmm. And then their parents, like we just can't, we, we came from this world where it was just so chauvinistic, so like I grew up in a, in a time where, I mean, you know, oh my God, my, my parents used to be like, you know, Trish, you're just so open. Oh my God, you bring home, you know, black friends, Jewish friends. I'm, I grew up in an Italian, Irish, um, you know, Puerto Rican neighborhood. And I just wanted to bring everybody home of every, you know, everything. I was like, I didn't understand, like, uh, uh, you know, all this. I, I just, I would like to you know, sit and cry if I was looking at like, you know, the Ku Klux Klan or things like this. I just was trying to say, crying and say, could you explain to me why we're, we're not the same? But there's so many beautiful men out there who just need training. Mm. And, and, and it, I don't mean it like in a mean way. Yeah. I just mean, I, I mean, I think that they want to do better. And it's I not just their think fault that if they're unaware. To, it's not their know, fault that they didn't we, know. We just have to like, you know, try to, and I think it's our job to when something rubs us the wrong way, we don't just let it go and say, you know, I didn't like when they said that. I should. I think it's us for us to say, hey, I want to point something out to you. Mm. 
and you, you, they might, you know, you might not like me, but you know, I just got to be honest with you about what you just said. It, it kind of wasn't the right thing. And I think the more that, like, I think it's our job. I think the more that we do that, I think they're, they're, people are innately good, and they would want to say, oh wow, maybe I could change to be better. That's just me being like, you know, Pollyanna. But <laughs> I just, I feel like we could. Uh, if we keep using our voice yeah. and, and not being afraid to tell somebody, I, I didn't like what you said. I, I didn't like the way you acted, and I love you, but let me. I, I've told all my brothers, I don't <laughs> like the way you were conditioned by my father. Yeah. I, I, I literally say that. I do not like the way you talk to women or my mother because you were conditioned by my father. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I say that, and I even love my father. But, you know, so that's, I feel like we really have to teach. And, and I don't think even, you, I, I, I agree with you, I don't even think you have to love these people to tell them. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, we, we can all tell yeah, anybody. We can all stand for being a little less like polite like, yeah, yeah, all the time. time. And, and you're on a professional workplace. People yeah. should have to act like fucking professionals. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, like, I, I, I get very tired of people, you know, getting away with stuff. And I, so I think it is important to say something. Absolutely. You know, um, well, see something, say something. And I think to that point, too, like, the thing that I always think about is uh, whenever something comes up or whenever it, it rubs someone the wrong way, I always go, oh, why? Because it, it, it will challenge, like, I've noticed that it just challenges people to think, oh, like, that is really interesting. Why are you upset about this? Mm -hmm. And, like, being able to, I think part of that, I, I definitely was conditioned to be very, like, you know, I'm, I'm from the South. I'm, I'm much more, like, I was taught to be demure. I was taught to, like, not talk about stuff. And... The world opened up when I realized I could be like, oh, but I don't, what do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. And to see that, because nobody, uh, you don't, because women have been trained to act this way and men have been trained to act like this, there is this, this gender disparity that exists within our reaction spaces. And part of that is when someone says something and you just sort of respond, and not even in a mean way, like, sometimes I'm, I'm in a mean way, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes it's just a, well, what did you mean? Yeah. And that, it, it truly is such a very simple way. Um, I, I have a lot of people that don't like certain things that I write in comics. And like, it, I, I'm not, I'm not going to talk to the internet. I don't know how to talk to the internet. But yeah. like, <laughs> it's great because I then can put that to like the other people in my life. And, and we can open, it opens conversation in a way. Like to your point, the, like having the anecdotes and being able yeah. to be like, oh yeah, you didn't, you, you never thought about this. You haven't had to live through this. And because you... This is one of the things that I think is so great about storytelling. We don't care about other people until we have an emotional touch point to them. Not intentionally, but like, yeah. there's a lot of people in the world. I can't think about everyone all the time. But like, you know, you, you see someone growing up in the South. My mom absolutely was talking about like gay rights. And she said, oh, I didn't, it wasn't until she knew of a gay character that she thought more about the rights of gay characters or the gay people because of like she didn't have anybody that she knew that their rights were being affronted um, and I think that that is so important within the stories that we we tell and, and we put up in the world or put out in the world as as entertainers as, as people in the industry it is important to start those conversations and put those conversations out there so that it, it isn't our job to to talk to somebody but we can put a female character out there that starts those conversations. Cool. Yeah. And we can always ask the question when um, certain cisgendered white men say, oh, well, the women are taking all the jobs. People of color are taking all the jobs. It's like, why, why do you think that? Did you, did, <laughs> you assumed it was yours before you even? <laughs> I, I thought the best people That's for the weird. jobs let's were getting through, them. Yeah. Let's, let's go through that thought process exactly. and why you arrived to that reaction. Because like on paper, it's an it's an insane thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's also really funny, like just that particular idea of the women are getting all the jobs. You know, like there's no, we're not. <laughs> there's, we're not. We're not. Um, there's like ma you know people are like, oh, there are mandates. You know, like uh, whatever. Netflix has a mandate that like there has to be two women directors on this eight episode or ten episode, or two women directors on a twenty episode show. And um, that might be true, maybe there is, good. Yeah. Um, but also, in the rest of the space where people are creating, in the indie space, which is how people learn to make films so they can get the jobs at Netflix and get the jobs at Marvel and get the jobs at whatever other 
place I didn't say, DC, <laughs> I don't wanna like, um, <laughs> you have to work your way up yeah. as a woman, especially, you know, you, somebody mentioned this earlier, like, oh yeah, this person, you know, you go through people's resumes on, on IMDb and you're like, that person never did anything and then they directed this huge movie, but you see women's resumes and they're short film, short film, short film, feature, indie feature, at a hundred K, at a million, like whatever it is, and they're working their way up. And in the indie space, there are no mandates. Yeah. Nobody's saying we want more women in the indie space. If film festivals talk about it and they try very hard to bring women in, but the people who are bringing money to projects that are indie projects, the independent financiers, the small um, production companies, they're, they're, you know, they're not necessarily doing that. There are no mandates in that space. So we're all fighting our way to like produce and direct and write our own content and build our own things without that kind of support that people perceive exists. So right. everyone's like, there are mandates for women. And it's like, Meh. I'm like, okay, no, we're constantly auditioning and we have to be super pleasant and we have to be cool mm -hmm. when like nasty jokes are being told in the yeah. room when we're there. <laughs> or we just have to find our good jokes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's why I started producing was because I was told over and over again that I didn't look like an engineer and couldn't be one on television. And over a decade of experience and a degree, wasn't enough to do that. And so I like I still remember when I finally was, you know, hosting on Discovery with Mythbusters as a major franchise and I was getting interviewed and the news correspondent asked me, she's like, why do you think that there's not women in STEM? And I'm like, there are. There are a large amount of women in STEM that are making huge innovations and breakthroughs every day. We just are never invited to be experts on your programming. Like, and so it became one of those things that instead of fighting it, now it, it ended up in. I was a live interview, so. Um, but it became one of those things that instead of trying to fight to be part of someone else's projects, I started developing and putting my own out there and I started seeing though how little funding was being given to female projects. And so it was just became a self-funding thing until backers finally started being like, you know, I want to be that ally. My company, my brand, we don't talk about our females that are changing the lives of people and changing the technology we're putting out there every day. Like how do we amplify their voices and so I've actually found a lot of the allies that I have in my space have come to me because either they have daughters or they have sisters or they have women doing incredible things around them that they want to see it change for so that also is another avenue versus just yelling at them. Okay. <laughs> it would also be great to get to a point where men will support women without having to be related to them. Right. <laughs> or dating them or something. It's the whole, uh, she's someone's daughter. Right. Like, oh my god. She's also like a human person. Like, right. You shouldn't we, want bad things to happen to her. Um, like I can talk to you all all day. Um, <laughs> all day. Uh, but we only have five minutes. I can't believe it. Yeah, 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 I know. Um, but there is one question I wanted to rapid fire to all of you um, that I love to ask guests so that we can look introspectively and remember how far we've come. Um, if your younger self was in this panel right now and heard all your accolades and what you're doing, what would they think? Oh, she'd be like, who's better than you? <laughs> you keep going, you got this, Trishy. I love you and I'm so damn proud of you. Yeah. Uh, that was so good. <laughs> Just those last I would time. want Trish's younger self. Yeah. 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 Um, I think little Hannah would be like, you used to think Comic Con was for nerds. What you <laughs> Look at you now. Yeah, but she would also be like, Oh, so this is what happens when you're um, um, a stage manager. You just end up like this. <laughs> <laughs> I think little Megan be very confused. <laughs> um, but good, nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, I think little me would just be like, when the hell did boys think they could take over making and fabrication? Dad said we all get to do it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> never me doing a boys thing in the shop with Dad. It was always just me in the shop with Dad. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I think little me would be, um, confused was the right word specifically because little me would have been like, I 
perceived that I did have all the power and I could do anything I wanted and I thought that was true. Mm. And now I see you sitting up there saying that it was hard and that it was hard for all these other women and I was wrong. Mm. Because as a little girl I thought, always thought like girls can do the same thing as boys mm -hmm. and yeah. then I found out I was wrong. Yeah. Um, not that I was wrong that that's true, but that I was wrong that the um, o openness and availability to, to that existed. Um, so I think she'd probably be like bawling her eyes out and mm. very confused about like the fact that we have to sit up here and even talk about this, yeah. that we're still doing this. Yeah. We'll yeah. Have still have to do this. Same fight. Yeah, Back to the Future said the cars would be flying by now, so I'm really confused about this panel. Um, thank you all. I'm over the moon. Yeah, let's give it a round. Um, before we go, uh, if everyone can like take their phones out, because um, we're going to give socials so they can follow oh. your work, right? Um, we'll start with Tris. I heard you have a new book coming out. Is that true? <laughs> Trish Doolin at Instagram, on Instagram, and Trish Doolin on Facebook, um, and we, I, and that Braca Aware is brcaaware.org, and that is all about uh, trying to help as many women, save millions of lives uh, from women getting breast cancer, and um, so that's what's going on. <laughs> woo, woo. Uh, I just am on Instagram, and I don't know how long I'll be on that for, but uh, it's just Bria Grant, and, um, but you can watch my new movie on anything, you can rent it, and also it's streaming for free on Epics if you have that, and just Corn oh. Hearts. What's it called? Corn Hearts. I was like, what's Hearts. the movie? Yeah. Um, I'm Hannah Lee Cook on Instagram and Twitter, Hannah spelled with one N, very important. Uh, you can also follow my cats on Instagram, uh, at Juniper and Jiro, they're very cute. Um, I'm at MagaFitz89 everywhere, um, from LinkedIn to, uh, yeah, I, I, Twitter, any of it, I, I do it all. I'm uh, at the real Tamara Robertson, it's long, I know I hate it, um, but you can also just go to that web address and get links to all the projects, uh, but Tinkering Bells, um, the Maker Podcast is streaming everywhere, and then Seekers of Science, uh, the outreach comic is on Amazon, Kindle, uh, and available on the website as well. I am at Tasha Litas, and um, even if you only follow me for like two weeks, I, I'm gonna like beg you to follow me right now because um, it's a at t a s h a l i t a s um, because I am um, working with a group of um, 14 female creators to create a response to Roe versus Wade being overturned right now, and we're about to release the campaign. We have short films that start filming. Roe versus Wade was overturned four weeks and one day ago, mm -hmm. and we start shooting on Thursday. So we wrote scripts. They went through a whole process. We had wow. mentor um, producers that were reading those and we moved very quick and that's a very fast timeline. And um, we thought we were gonna get money from all our allies that said they were gonna give us money mm -hmm. and we didn't. Mm -hmm. And so we're doing a campaign um, and we're shooting anyway. We're using money out of our, out of our pockets. Um, we have really cool actors that I've have to be announced, so I'm not allowed to say who they are, but it's very exciting. <laughs> and um, so even if it's just for two weeks, I would love for you to join me there and then like unfollow me if you want, just so that you can see that when it happens because we haven't released that campaign yet and we really like need so much help. Um, and it's, it, it's all these beautiful stories that are so uniquely different from different women. And I'm sorry, I know we had five minutes like 20 minutes ago, so um, <laughs> please help. Yes, thank That's you. That's Instagram, yeah. And um, my name is Fantastic Frankie. And you can find me at Fantastic Frankie, F R A N K E Y, unless you're on Twitter, because occasionally I'm on there, <laughs> at Fanboy Fighter. If you want to see how it feels to be an Afro Latina, 
who loves anime, comics, sci-fi, and how our mind works, definitely check out my page. A lot of debates, a lot of discussion, and I love to highlight women. So thank you for letting me moderate. This is literally a dream come true. Thank you. with you guys yes. before we get kicked off the stage. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs>